Hey everyone, let me preface this video by saying I'm not a battery expert. Please check the comments, see what other people are saying. I'm only making this video because there was a huge lack of information out there on these JBD 200 amp BMSs. Um, specifically, I got this one from Doken Power along with these cells. They all came within the same week that I ordered them. That was nice. Uh, in the picture on their website, it does show the old style BMS. This is the new style. You can tell because these legs don't protrude out. But with these new style BMS, it doesn't include any hardware as far as your connections here. So you will need to pick some up. Now, luckily I do have a pretty good assortment of bolts um, for the heater port, which is right here. This can turn on a optional heating pad to heat your cells up. Otherwise your cells won't charge below a certain temperature. I believe it's usually zero Celsius. And this is a M4 thread that you'll need for that. And for these other two, your main connections here, those are M6. However, there's not a lot of clearance underneath. You're gonna bottom out pretty quickly. Let me get you a measurement on this. Okay, it looks like all the way down to the circuit board from the top. about nine millimeters. So you may need to order up some M6 bolts, uh, probably about 10 millimeters, depending on your lug thickness. Anyway, along with this BMS came a number of cables here. Let's go ahead and run through them all. We can start, well, right here, you'll see a missing port. That would be for your computer connection if you were gonna do any reprogramming of the module. However, most of that's also done through the app on your phone. The two connections right here are temperature sensors that you'll put on and around the battery. It's gonna sense your battery temperature, obviously, and it's going to change the charging and discharging characteristics going off of what these two temperature sensors show. Above that, is I believe it's just called a switch, which they give you this little jumper for. And apparently it can be programmed to completely enable or disable the entire BMS. Obviously I haven't hooked it up yet, so I can't verify, but that's what that port would be for. Next down here is your actual cell monitoring harness. You can see it has um, all five of your wires there and would plug in right there once everything's set up. Next to that is where your Bluetooth module is going to plug in. There it is, goes right there. Now they also included this little guy, which I could not find hardly any information about online. You Google it and it just shows up as a uh, temperature cutoff switch, but that's exactly what it is. You can see it doesn't have any connector on the other end and I actually uh, accidentally burnt it while I was testing it. However, I can verify that it works. And at 60 Celsius, about 140 Fahrenheit, if I recall, it will cut continuity between these two wires. Why would you need this? I'll tell you exactly why. I bought this little heating pad right here off Amazon. You can see this is the uh, little heating plate that I'm gonna put underneath my cells and went ahead and Plug this in straight to 12 volts and just watch the temperature climb and climb and climb and climb. It doesn't use much power. I believe only about one amp, so maybe 10, 15 watts. But this went all the way up to 100 degrees Celsius, 212 Fahrenheit. That's boiling water, this little heating pad. So obviously I don't wanna put something 212 degrees Fahrenheit directly underneath my cells. So that is right where this is gonna come into play. I'm gonna put it down underneath the heating pad in my box build. That way, once it gets up to around 140 Fahrenheit, it'll turn off the heating pad until it cools back down, then it'll turn back on, turn back off, turn back on, and I don't have to worry about 
completely melting my batteries. So from here, how you would wire it would be, uh, you have your two leads coming off of here. They're um, bi-directional. You don't have to worry about polarity on them. And you would hook one up to here. The other one could go to the terminal right there, crimp an eyelet on it. And this one, run it to a fused positive connection. That way it has a constant fused positive connection going to the whole thing and all that it's waiting for is this board to complete the circuit by activating this negative terminal on the BMS. But that's how the heating circuit works. That's exactly what this is for right here. It came with no information at all when I purchased it. So hopefully that information helps you guys out. I'm gonna go ahead and do my best to assemble this again. This is my first time, I'm no expert. Here's my rudimentary battery box build. I'm going to have to do a plunge cut to put this down underneath my heating pad. It gives a cycle life of 2500 cycles without fixture and 3500 cycles with fixture. So right away you see that we are getting an additional 1000 cycles if we fixture the batteries versus have them loose. Okay, so I stuck my temperature sensors about halfway down the length here on both sides. There's one over there and the other back in that corner and they'll connect to the BMS up on top once I, well, you'll see. There we go. So this is sticking up high enough, specifically three quarters of an inch, to clear the studs and nuts and anything else underneath. Um, from the top of the battery casing to the top of the stud is 0.6 inches. And then on top of that is going to sit the mount for the BMS something like that and something like that roughly okay and there we go the bms is mounted to this board and underneath you can see i just used some metal actually some metal spacers from a fridge compressor with the rubber removed that's just to keep the heat sink off of the wood, give it a little spacing. Uh, the weird thing with this BMS is the majority of the heat is actually, as you can see, gonna be radiated through this plate and not sure why the heat sink is only connected to the bottom of the circuit board. Almost everything that needs the heat dissipated is up on this side. So this side's up. I know it's probably a controversial subject, whether or not to have the heat sink up or not, but that's what this one is, and that's how it's gonna be mounted. So there we go, BMS is mounted, and you can see I already connected my temperature sensors there. And through the magic of video editing, I've tidied up a little bit, went ahead and rebuilt my storage up there. And from here, I'll go ahead and mount this master disconnect switch between the battery bank negative and the BMS negative input. I'm sure there's strong opinions on where in the circuit the disconnect switch should be mounted. 
but I figure having it pre-BMS could save me should there be an issue with the BMS itself. Okay, battery cutoff switch installed, connected to the BMS. Next, I'll hook up my heater circuit with that M4 sized screw. And now I'll connect my BMS negative output. This is what's gonna feed everything in the van right here. Go ahead and connect it right here with my M6 sized screw. Now my wire lug is a little bit too big, so I put this washer just right in the center. You can see it moving around just to help keep it centered on this post. Now note that you want to make sure that your wire connections don't contact this top plate of the BMS. Honestly, it's a pretty awful design having the connections so close to this plate. They are slightly higher than this top plate, but still you want to be careful that it doesn't short out through this plate. You can see I have some space down there. It's not a lot, but the screw is very tight. Also make sure that you don't hit the screw right there and short out through that. Kind of a goofy design, honestly. But now that all that's connected, we can go ahead and connect our Bluetooth dongle. All right, there we are. Uh, the range on these is not that great, so go ahead and position it anywhere that you see fit. I'm just gonna drape it over there for now. And finally, let's go ahead and turn on our battery cutoff switch here. And we can connect our cell voltage harness. Without this connected, the BMS will not turn on and it's not gonna flow any current. So this does need to be connected. This will be your final connection. You see the blue light comes on down in there. Now let's go ahead and jump into the app. Now I'm on an iPhone, so the apps are pretty limited. There are two that I use. First is the official JBD BMS app. Of course, that's not what it's called. I am going to murder this pronunciation. The Zhaozing BMS is the app that you're going to use for the most part. And of course, the much more aesthetically pleasing Zhaozang Electric app. Now note that the Bluetooth setup won't allow both apps to operate simultaneously. You'll have to fully exit one before opening the other. Also, if you're seeing wild battery cell voltage fluctuations, stop. Just disconnect everything and check the individual cells with a multimeter. Chances are they're within specs, which means that your cell voltage harness needs to be reassessed. I had to remake my harness as my heat shrink terminals melted the adhesive into my solder joints, causing faulty readings and just overall bad connections. Also, unfortunately on iOS, you do have to pay to change the BMS parameters. I don't think that's the case on Android, but I have not confirmed. Update, broke out my old HTC One. And yes, you can for free change the parameters of this BMS on Android via the Car Plunge, Car Lounge BMS app. So there you go. If you have an old Android laying around, download this app and you can change your parameters to whatever you would like. So that's it for this video guys. Hopefully it helps shed some light on this BMS setup for you. 
You can also find loads of information on the DIY solar forum as well. But other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.